everybody, welcome back to another awesome day, another awesome vlog. I know I've been doing a lot of videos lately about my life skills class, but I just am learning so much and really enjoying it. And I just wanna be able to share with people some of the things that I've been learning because even if only one person out there learns something from my video and is able to feel better about themselves or improve their life in any way, then that is satisfying to me. So I just want to, you know, continue sharing with you guys the things I've been learning and teach you some of the things that I've been learning to better myself, my communication, my relationships, my boundaries, all of the things we've been talking about. And like I said, if any of you feel like you are in the same place I'm in on any of these subjects and learn even one little thing from them, then that is a plus for me and wonderful news. So today we're going to talk about relationships, not so much family relationships, but marital relationships, relationships with either your spouse or your significant other, and the things that are necessary in order to build a strong relationship together. Let's get started. There are four foundations to a relationship. And remember, we're talking about an intimate relationship. So not relationships with your friends or your parents, but relationships with your spouse, significant other, boyfriend, girlfriend, and so forth. The four foundations to a good, strong relationship are finances, family, social or common interests, and spirituality. These are the four foundations that you need to discuss with any potential partner or someone, even if you are already in a relationship, a committed relationship, or in a marriage. These are the four things that you need to discuss in depth to make sure that you are either on the same page or can be on the same page. So the first one we're going to discuss is finances. As most people know, money is the number one thing that can cause a rift or a problem in relationships. People feel differently about money. Generally in a relationship, one person is a saver and one person is a spender. That is my relationship with my husband, Bill, as well. He's a saver, I'm a spender. As you've seen from any of our other videos though, he does love spending and buying special things for me. But in our relationship, he's definitely the saver. He's the one that makes sure that he has saved for our future and that we are going to be safe and secure and able to pay our bills if anything happens to any of our jobs or sources of income, we know that we are safe and secure. So in your relationship, when it comes to finances, you need to discuss who's going to be the one paying the bills and in charge of making sure that they get paid monthly and to make sure that they get paid timely. Obviously when bills are paid late, there are fees involved and that can cause a hardship in a relationship as well because those fees are unnecessary. So you want to find out which person is going to be the one in charge of paying the bills. But you also wanna have guidelines for spending to make sure that each person knows what the guideline is. What is a person allowed to spend if they're out on their own just shopping for um, something fun? Usually, you should discuss a number, uh, $50 or $100, whatever works best in your situation, that is a safe number that if you're out and you find something under that number, it's safe to spend that without getting approval from the other person. The other thing that's really important is to discuss your budget together because if one person's paying the bills and the other person isn't even aware of how much every bill is, what the budget is, what they have available and extra for spending each month after all the bills are paid, that can become a hardship as well. So you want to discuss your bills and your budget annually. It needs to be reassessed because times change, things change, your bills paid um, are going to change from year to year, and your circumstances are going to change. So you want to make sure that on a yearly basis you guys get together and talk about your finances, talk about your bills, and make a clear budget. The second foundation is family, and this is related to your extended family. You need to discuss with your partner 
where you're going to be spending the holidays. When a holiday is coming up, you need to take time to, instead of just assuming that you're gonna be going with your family, now you have another person to consider. And you need to discuss whether you're going to spend half the time with one family and the second half of the day with another family, or if this year for Christmas you're gonna spend your day with one family and maybe Thanksgiving you're gonna spend a different family. But you need to have some rules, guidelines, and clear communication so that there isn't any problem when the holiday gets here because the holidays are already stressful enough. You also need to have guidelines and communication regarding your family and your time spent with them other than on the holidays. If your family is really close to you and you spend a lot of time together, you need to discuss with the person that you're in a relationship with what your relationship with your extended family is and how much time you'd like to be spending with them so that they're not surprised if you have your mom and dad or sister and brother or cousins over on a regular basis, they need to understand that you you are a close family that you like to spend a lot of time together and not just on the holidays. Every family dynamic is different. Some families only see each other on the holidays. So then if you end up in a relationship with someone who wants to see their family on a weekly basis, that's something new to you. So you just need to make sure you have clear communication and clear guidelines regarding your extended family and how they're gonna be a part of your life on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis. The third foundation is social or common interests. If you're in a relationship with someone, you don't need to have everything in common, do everything the same, do everything together every minute of the day, but you should at least have one thing in common that you both love to do together. Of course, for me and Bill, it's going to Disneyland. We love doing most things together, but Disneyland is definitely the one place that we love to go together. We love to go there regularly. It is a peaceful, happy, loving environment, and we just love to be there. So find out what your common interest is with the person that you're in a relationship with so that you can help that part of your relationship thrive. You also should have at least one couple that you have a friendship with, that you and your partner both get along with both people so that you guys can spend time together with them as a group. You should also each have your own separate friend that you can go to and that you can talk to when you have any kind of concern or especially any type of incident within your relationship with your partner. You never wanna go to family to complain or to talk about your problems because your family takes things personally. They're always going to be on the attack then in the future and they're going to remember these things. Friends are a little more separated it's a little bit easier to talk to your friends about these kind of things and not expect them to take it personally and then hold a grudge in the future, like potentially your mom, sister, or brother might do if that's who you're going to, to talk about a problem that you're having with your spouse or your significant other. So you always should have friendships together, friendships separate, it's always okay though for even your separate friendships for there to be some sort of connection so that everybody feels comfortable. Obviously you don't want your significant other or your partner to feel uncomfortable with who you're going to to talk about your feelings or your concerns. Make sure that you can have your own hobbies, have your own separate interests as well. You don't have to do everything together. You wanna to be able to be your own individual person. And remember, self always comes first. So you wanna have things that you enjoy doing separate from the other person. For example, I love crafting. Bill is not in my craft room with me crafting. It is not something he enjoys. When I go in there and I'm making my wreaths or my cards or all of my fun crafts, it's my time. I usually turn on the radio or put on something that I wanna hear soft in the background while I'm working on a craft that I've been thinking of or maybe something that I've found on Pinterest that I've been looking forward to making for myself. So common interest, something that you do together, things you do separate, friends you have together, friends you have separate. And the fourth thing is spiritual. This doesn't necessarily mean religion, but religion does fall into this. So you obviously want to have an idea if you guys are the same religion, different religions, and what the other person is going to require of you as far as that is concerned. If someone is a very, very strong religious 
uh, person and they wanna go to church every week and they wanna be involved and they wanna go multiple times a week, you wanna make sure that this is something that you know about each other and are willing to agree to or accept whether you're on the same page or if it's something that you're okay with them doing separately. But this is something that you need to discuss and make sure you know about each other. Another part of spirituality though is also where you find peace. How can you find peace within your home? How can you find peace within your relationship? And these are things that you need to make sure that you have within a relationship with someone. You don't wanna be in a relationship with someone where it is always turbulent and there is never any peace within the home. So if this is where you're at in your relationship, you need to take some time, have some clear communication with your partner so that you guys can determine how to find peace within your own home peace within your space and peace within your relationship. Also, if you are anticipating having children, you need to be able to discuss religion, spirituality, and how you plan on raising the children. This is something very important for couples that are intending to bring children into their relationship. This can become an issue when you don't think about these kind of things when you're first starting a relationship. This is something that can be an issue down the line, and you wanna make sure that you have communicated clearly and that you know exactly what's going to be expected if you do end up having children together. These are the four foundations of a relationship. They're all very, very important. Each one plays a different role and it's something for you to look at, think about, discuss with your partner or your significant other. Make sure you're on the same page or find a way to potentially get on the same page. This has been something really fun for Bill and I to discuss and to kind of read through all of the different steps to each foundation and talk about because we actually have found that we are on the same page about almost everything as far as these four foundations are concerned and there's always room to grow in every relationship. I hope you enjoyed my video. I think my next video is going to be on forgiveness. We've been talking about forgiveness in my class lately, and it seems like such a simple thing, but it's really, really very in-depth, and there are a lot of steps involved to properly forgive someone so that you can heal and move on with your future. So that's what I'm gonna be preparing for for my next video, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe. 